So in this video, I'm going to show you how to group by in R using the dplyr packet. So with that in mind, let's head over to my R studio. So if you want to follow along using the same data set that I've used, I got it from Kaggle. The link is in the description below, or you can go to the link provided on screen here. So once you've got the data set saved in your documents folder, you can just load it in using read R with the root shown here. So if we just run this, we'll be able to see what the data set looks like. So as we can see, some of the data set has quite a few NAs in different parts of the actual rows of data. Now, because there's going to be certain data points that we're just going to be using for this particular group by, then it's best to remove any rows that have got NAs under that part. So what we want to do is just clean up the data set a little bit and also make these column titles a lot more user friendly in R by adding full stops between where the spaces are. So if we go back, so to replace the column spaces with full stops, what you need to be able to do is create a change of names to the columns. And how we do that is we set names and then in brackets, the data set name that we've created. So in this case, what I've done when I've set the actual loading of the data sets, I called it MPS underscore data set. So you put in that there and then you point in with the arrow and the hyphen to say make names, which is what you want to actually change the names into. And then you want to type in make dot names and then in brackets names again with the data set and then set unique to equal true. This one then change any spaces in the column titles with a full stop. So it's continuous string. So the next thing we need to do is remove any columns with NAs in them. And the best way to do this is to pick a particular column that you're going to actually set the removal of any rows of NAs. So what I do, I set the same data set name because I want it to overwrite the previous data set. And then I've put the data set name and then within square brackets, you want to be able to put exclamation mark is dot na and then within that you put what your data set name is and then dollar sign and the column which in this case is brand and then close bracket under that and then do a comma and then that will remove any rows that have na on them under brand and then the last thing we need to do because we're going to be using a date at the moment the date is not set to a format that we can use it's set more as a string than an actual date format so for us to be able to be able to look at the min and the max of the date, we need to be able to format that date into date format. So to do that, you need to select which column you're going to be using. And in this case, we're going to be using date of survey, which I've got here. So you use your data set name and then you set which column you're going to change to. And then you do your arrow and your hyphen to then write out your formula. And then here we do as dot date and then within brackets, we are now going to set what the data set is and then with a dollar sign, what the column is and then set the format to month, day, year, because that's how it is in the data set currently. And then if I was to run that, we can then see the changes. So now you can see up here, we have full stops where spaces were in the column names. And then here is the data survey and you can see it's formatted it now into a actual date format. And any of the NAs, which in this case was under brand, are no longer there because it's got rid of the columns that had those NAs in it. Be careful you don't use a column that has lots of NAs in it where there is actual other data you want because otherwise if we did it with this particular one, it would remove all these rows which have got NAs in them. And that's also another thing I would like to point out in this because I have not done each one separately while going across, I actually put in what the change of name is because once this one runs, this will no longer be date space of space survey, it will be date dot of dot survey. So that's why I put in that there. Just thought I'll just add that point. So now we have our data set all nice and clean. Now we can install the dplyr package. So now that's installed, now we can start doing our group by. For this particular group by, I'm going to create a group that is based on the number of responses on the survey, the min and the max date of the survey, and then also the mean recommended score. And to do this, so for the new data table, I've set it for group underscore by underscore MPF. And then I've put in the data set name and then piped in group by, which is the function to create your group by. I've then used the column original customer tier code because that has different customer tiers that we can use to see different results for the min and max of survey 
and then also for the average recommended score. And then once that's been done, then this is where you pipe in the summarize to be able to summarize the data that you're grouping by, which in this case is the customer tier code. So to get a count of the number of responses, I'm gonna be counting the rows. And to do that, you want to type in what you want to call your column. And in this case, I'm calling it number of responses and then equals N in brackets. And then that will do a count all the different rows in that particular data set against those particular tier codes. And then do a comma. And then I put in for my next column, min date of survey and then do equals and then do min and then use the date of survey column that we converted into a date and then we go on to another comma to do another one and this time we do max date of survey and that is just the same layout as the min date of survey just instead of min it's equal sign max and then date of survey column and then to get the average recommended score you then do a comma then do your last one i did avg underscore recommended score equals mean and then the recommended column, which has a score of zero to 10 in there, and then gives you what will be your average. And then I do close bracket. And then if I run that now, we can see how that would look. We now have our tier codes down the side here, the number of responses, which is the count of rows that have against those different tier codes, the min date of survey date. So that's the first survey that happened under those tier codes. And then the last survey date, which is using the max data survey, and then the average recommended score. So as we can see here, the actual highest one is platinum, although it's only had 20 responses. And then the one that's got the lowest score is your number one club member. But again, that's only had 32. And then we can just set that so we can actually see that in a sort order, but it's still not quite readable because if you're gonna give this data to someone to view, they might not understand the layout of the actual date format. So you wanna change that. And so then it's more readable for someone depending on which country they're from. And then also instead of having six decimal places, it would be good just to have one so it can round up or down to the nearest decimal place of the score of here 988777. So if we come back to our code, instead of where before I put in just doing the count, the min data survey, max data survey, and the mean recommended, if we just do some little tweaks to this particular code here, we can then format. And that's what I've done down here. So where we had number responses, that stays the same. But where we've got the surveys, we then include before the min and max a format. And then within that, we set to day, month, year. And that's doing day and then three letters of the month and then year. And then for the average recommended score to get it rounded to one decimal place, instead of just being mean recommended, just before the mean, put round and then in brackets, after the recommended, you put a comma and then one, and that means one decimal place. Obviously, if you want two decimal places, you can put two, and if you don't want any decimal places, you can put zero. Then you do a close bracket, and then if we run this, we'll then get a formatted table. And as we can see here, we now have day, actual month name, and then year, and then we've got our recommended score. And if we just change that, we can now see 9.1 and 7.4, the score in a more readable format. So now that looks great to then be able to give that information to someone. To do that, all we need to do is then export to Excel. So if we go back, we can then export to Excel using write Excel. And then once you've installed it, what you need to do is then type write underscore Excel SX because that's the format we're gonna be exporting to. And then you put in your data set name and then depending on where you're saving your file, in this case, it's in the documents folder, but then I've got another folder called after Excel users. So I've set after Excel users and then backslash backslash. And then whatever you want to call your particular Excel file. In this case, I'm going to call it group underscore by underscore MPS and then put dot and then Excel SX because that's the format you're going to be saving as. So if I run this, and then if I open up the Excel file that's been saved, we can now see we have the same data all nicely laid out and exported into Excel. So I hope you found this video useful. And if you did, please give a like and subscribe because it really helps out my channel. And if you want to carry on your analytical journey, you can check out these videos over here. And as always, until next time.